Hey guys, welcome back to part three of the DIY flight controller series. Now, you'll notice that I'm not in my bedroom right now, and that's because, well, amidst all the working from home, my desk has become a makeshift FPGA development station. So it's a bit too messy to record. So what I thought I'd do is take you guys out to one of my favorite fly spots to do today's video. So let's go. Alright, so in today's video, we're going to be building up a state space model of our quadcopter system. Now that begs the question, what on earth is a state space model in the first place? And simply put, it's just a way of representing a dynamical system in a way that lends itself particularly well to being run through a computer. Now, how does it do this? Well, simply it just breaks down the differential equations that govern the system into a series of simultaneous first order differential equations. And the way it does this is by keeping track of intermediary states of the system. Now the intermediary states of a system for our mechanical system are basically the angular positions and the angular velocities, but they could very well be things like voltages across capacitors, current through inductors, temperatures, water levels, things like that. Now I don't really want to go too deep into the maths behind state space modeling in this video because then it would be ridiculously long, but Brian Douglas, who is pretty much the god of controls engineering on YouTube, has already done a series on the official MATLAB channel and the links in the description so I urge you guys to check that out. So before we can actually build our model, we need to understand what the states, the inputs and the outputs are for our system. So like I said before, the states are going to be the angular positions and the angular velocities. And I'm going to group them all together in this six dimensional vector called X. And this is the state vector. So the first three elements are going to be theta one, theta two, theta three. And somehow these three elements are going to describe the angular position. I'm not gonna tell you how just yet because that's a subject for a whole new video. But the next three elements, which are omega x, omega y, omega z, are going to be the three angular velocities in the body reference frame. Now, what are the inputs to our system? Well, simply, there are going to be the three torques, so tau x, tau y, tau z in the body reference frame. And the outputs? Well, that depends on what we're trying to build. Right now, let's just say we're trying to build an attitude stabilizer, something that controls the angular positions. So the outputs, what we care about, are going to be theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. And you can see that this is actually a subset of our state variables. So we have the state vector x and the input vector u and the output vector y defined as follows. So now how do we build our state space model? Well, the key is in two equations. The first equation is called the output equation. And that says that our output vector y is some function of our state vector x and our input vector u. And ideally, it's a linear combination of the two. So y is equal to cx plus du, where c and d are some matrices. So we can see that since our output vector y looks like this, our C matrix should look like this. And if you do the matrix multiplication out, you'll find that this is actually what we get. There is no feed forward in our system where the inputs directly affect our outputs, but sometimes there could be, just not for our system. Now the second equation that is important to us is called the equation of state. And that basically says that our change in state x dot is some function well, ideally some linear combination, of our state vector x and our input vector u. So something like x dot is equal to ax plus bu. Now, if we look back at our state vector x, we have theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, omega x, omega y, omega z, right? So what is x dot? Well, the change, well, the rate of change of angular position is angular velocity. So the first three elements of x dot are just omega x, omega y, omega z. And the next three elements are going to be omega dot x, omega dot y, omega dot z. And this was actually derived in the previous video where I gave you omega dot in the fixed reference frame. So that's what we're going to use. Omega dot x, omega dot y, omega dot z in the fixed reference frame. So our change in state vector x dot looks like this. Now, if we look back closely at the equation we derived in the previous video and expand it out, we'll find that we actually have this equation here, term by term. And if you're eagle-eyed, you'll notice that this is not linear. That's because we have that whole cross product. So we have these cross terms where there's going to be an omega x, omega y, an omega x, omega z, omega y, omega z. So how do we get rid of this? Well, turns out if we actually redefine our inputs to be not the torques, but the angular accelerations, we can get 
this equation x dot is equal to ax plus bu, where the A matrix looks like this and the B matrix looks like this. And you can pause the video and go and multiply this out yourself and you'll find that this is actually true. So we have actually turned our nonlinear equation into a linear one just by redefining or remapping the inputs. Now internally, we still have to do the nonlinear solving to convert tau into omega dot, but our final state equation is linear now. So I hope that was useful to you guys. Basically what we've done now is we've defined our x, our state vector, our y, our output vector, and our u, our input vector. And we've also found our a, b, c, and d matrices that form a linear state space model. So this method of linearizing a nonlinear system that we've applied has a name and I forgot it, so I'll include it on the screen right now. And it's different to the usual method of linearizing where you find some sort of equilibrium point and you consider only small changes about that equilibrium. And the reason I didn't want to go that route is because, well, it, imp it imposes some pretty strong constraints on our system that is not very fun to fly with. So anyways, I hope that was useful to you guys. Let me know if you're still confused or if you have any suggestions as to what you want to see next. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.